No, I certainly don't think that the budget is at all done enough to bring us out of the slowdown. I think the one positive we are seeing is that uh, uh, for people earning up to 12.5 lakhs, there is a real significant tax break, provided they're willing to forego other deductions, which means if somebody at that earning level has a home loan or a vehicle loan or auto loan or whatever, then um, uh, he probably will get less back from the taxman than if he just continued with the existing tax rate and enjoyed the deductions. So it, it will depend. We'll only know the impact of this when we see how many individuals will actually avail of this tax break, in depending on their individual circumstances. But otherwise, I, if, I'm afraid there's nothing much in this budget. You know, after all these slogans about stand up India, we have a sit down India budget. So we have missed the fiscal deficit target. What do you think? What they have missed the fiscal deficit target every single year for six years. I pointed this out in my budget speech in the Lok Sabha, that they have missed it every single year. They project one and always the next year the minister comes back, whether it was my dear friend late Mr. Jetli or whether it's now Mr. Sitaram, they come back and admit that their numbers were wrong. I pointed out last year, for example, their revenue projections were totally unrealistic. So how can you possibly make this kind of revenue? Oh yes, yes we can. Now where they are, they have come so so much lower that they fortunately had a slightly more realistic projection for revenue in this budget. But for the last few years, they've been completely missing their targets. They've been missing their disinvestment targets also. They announced disinvestment objectives in order to show a better number for their deficit. But in practice, they never make that money. There was, I think, the first or second year of this Modi government, they had projected 99,000 crores from disinvestment and they didn't even make one rupee. Now, that was the kind of situation we're facing. So we're definitely looking at a government. Uh, which has a major gap between what they actually do and what they say they're going to do. And we are living with that. So in this particular case today, we are at a two-hour, 45-minute speech. Uh, I must say the length of a complete T20 match, but not even half as exciting. And uh, we're looking at a situation where um, there's really very little um, connection between what is being said and what is being experienced in India. The divorce between rhetoric and reality has never been greater. So just want to do with the policies that has come this time in this very very much anticipated budget how we can think that you know india can go towards the five trillion dollar it, I'm afraid it's simply not realistic. Every economist has calculated. So at her 10% we'll be growing at 3.3. That's what we're looking at. Where are we going to get to 5 trillion? We will be, forget 10, 20, 24, we'll be lucky to get there in 2050 at this particular rate and with this kind of government and its fiscal policy. So I don't quite know where we're going to go with all this. I have not had a, anything much positive to say about this budget other than they've given money for museums, culture and heritage, which I'm very much in favor of. I'm glad they woke up to that. But although, other than that, there's really nothing in this budget that's going to stimulate the economy and give us the kind of development we need. So they've said sabka saath, sabka vikas, sabse, sabka vishwas. Sabka saath to ab tak nahi hua hai. Sabka vikas, kaise hoga when there is no vikas happening? The vikas is still elusive to this government for the last six years. And sabka vishwas, they have broken with their divisive and discriminatory policies. It's really been, to my mind, a very disappointing period uh, in our evolution as a democracy and as a strong economy. Just one last question about the taxation policies that has been recommended to take on. Well, as I said, the main thing that's interesting about taxation from the individual point of view is the 12.5 lakhs and less you get 50% really breaks, provided you don't have anything you want to deduct, home loans, auto loans and so on. On the corporate side, I believe the dividend distribution tax that is being cut is interesting, but some corporates tell me that they were better off paying that tax than passing it on to shareholders who will now have to pay a tax themselves, so that it becomes less attractive to the shareholder because in the old days, if the company was paying the DDT, the individual didn't have to pay further tax on it. But now, there's no company DDT, it merely adds to the income of the shareholder and puts him perhaps in a higher tax bracket or puts him in a position where he left to pay.